Reading with your kids. Hey, 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 so great to see you. Come on in. Hi, my name is Jed Lee, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast. We are coming to you from the beautiful neighborhood of Reedville in the southwest corner of Boston, Massachusetts. Please be sure to connect with us on social media, facebook.com slash reading with your kids at Jedly Magic on Twitter and reading with your kids on Instagram. We have an, an, an amazing show for you today. Our guest today is Megan Shadlick and she is the driving force behind something amazing. It's called the Healing Library. You know, I am so excited uh, about this episode of the show. You're going to love it. The Healing Library is such an amazing concept. And you know what else is amazing? Uh, a couple of things. Books.com. But that is, it's an amazing website. We're going to tell you all about it in a minute. It's V-O-O-K-S.com. But what's most amazing is that Books is offering a free one-year subscription to their service for every single teacher and homeschooling parent that are listening. So listen carefully. Books combines the love, trust, and safety of children's books with the convenience of online streaming for a whole new way to experience stories with their growing library of animated storybooks that both kids and parents will love. By adding movement, sound, and narration to existing books, Vooks bring stories to life, encouraging the love of reading while promoting literacy, imagination, and focus for children 2 to 8 years old. With Vooks, children can learn, laugh, and let their imagination soar, while parents can feel good about letting their little ones enjoy quality, guilt-free screen time. Right now, Vooks is offering a free one-year subscription to every single teacher and homeschooling parent out there. They also have some great free resources that go along with some of their most beloved titles. My beautiful wife has tried this out. She loves it. I love it. We think you should go to Vooks.com. That's V-O-O-K-S.com. Vooks.com. This episode of the podcast is also brought to you by Bruce Wayne is Insane, meaning Ninja Kitty, by our friend Arlene Hio. This really is a, a fun book with some really, really fun illustrations. A young pit bull who's new to the neighborhood meets an unlikely friend and learns more than he expected. We featured Bruce Wayne is Insane Meeting Ninja Kitty at our booth at Kids Expo in Chicago. I have to tell you, so many families were, were drawn in by the really, really fun artwork in this book. This is a fascinating story about friendship written and illustrated by a fascinating woman, Arlene Hio. She's been on the show. She is an author. She's also an illustrator. She's also an acupuncturist. Who treats humans and animals? You gotta check out her interview on the Reading with Your Kids podcast. And you gotta check out Bruce Wayne is Insane, meaning Ninja Kitty. It is available on Amazon. I am really, really excited about our conversation tonight. Our, our guest is a driving force behind something called the Healing Library. Please welcome to the show, coming to us from Chattanooga, right outside of Chattanooga in Tennessee, <laughs> Megan Shadlick. Megan, how are hey. you? <laughs> Jed, I'm great. Thank you so much for inviting me on tonight. You're welcome. I, 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 I should have mentioned Signal Mountain. That's where you're coming from, Signal Mountain. What a cool name for community. It is. It's really cool. It's actually this this small mountain that's outside of Chattanooga, and we are we're technically up in the clouds just above the, the city, so I get to live literally in the clouds. That is why, yeah, that's where my, my wife says I live most of the time, but not in, <laughs> you do it intentionally. So that's. No, now I get to be figurative and literal. <laughs> well, I'm really excited to learn more about the healing library. I went on to your website and, and it's great. And this is a really fascinating idea. Why don't you give us the, the thumb tip uh, description of the healing library and then we'll d dive in deeper to it. Sure thing. So the Healing Library is a project that my team and I started 
where we wanted to give families the opportunity during periods of trauma to experience healing activities and opportunities basically of their own design. And so we really hinge it on a couple of things. The first is high quality, diverse picture books that come with discussion and observation guides. The second is activities and an activities guide that are based around art and play based therapy activities, which have all been approved by our, our team's licensed clinical social worker, along with all of the, um, the components you would need to participate in those activities. And then the final piece really has to do with your own family. So, and the community you live in. So who's available locally that we can talk to once we return this kid to our library or we've um, utilized all of the activities in it to continue our journey. We really believe that no family that's experienced trauma should have to do research on top of everything else that you're feeling. We wanted to put something together that would essentially be the first step you as a family can take to ensure that you're headed in a healthy direction down a path of healing. I, I love this. Um, I, for, for so many reasons, but I think, that, I think the thing that I love the most is that it's encouraging people who've experienced trauma, who've experienced a, a, a hurt, a, a loss, to take some action. You yeah. know, th- there's a time for us all to, to, to feel the pain and, and to kind of process that, but I, I think there's, I, I I, I I think there's there, there there's some folks here or some there's a push from some quarters of the community to just allow people just oh let them they're in pain let them just kind of wall not wallow isn't the word but just let them sit there and and they're that, they're gonna come out, out of it yeah they're gonna come yeah. out of it when they do but I love this because it's I, I think it's empowering families. Yeah. And we, you know, it really started as a focus on our kids, right? Because we as adults may be familiar with you know, the stages of trauma or the stages of grief, which is something we all go through after any kind of trauma, be it the death of a loved one, be it changing jobs, um, anything along those lines, changing schools for a kid, losing a friend as a kid. Um, so we as adults have some language, right? And we've developed some tools or strategies and understanding of who we are and how we deal with it. But for a child who's going through this, perhaps for the first time, they're going to look to us as parents to figure out what do I do to get through this? And if we don't have the healthiest strategies that we're utilizing for ourselves, how can we empower our children and really raise the best possible individual so that the next time something traumatic happens to them, they have language, they have skills, they have that toolbox that's starting to be built so that they can adapt and they can really self-direct and redirect in a, a direction that's positive. Well, and, you know, you mentioned the fact that, you know, uh, this is this is great because, you know, when the child is is, is suffering, the, you, you have these resources so the parents don't have to go out and do research themselves. I, I think another real benefit of this is th- the reality is when we're, we're talking about um, our kids losing a loved one. We're talking about our kids losing a pet. Well, we're, we also experience that loss, too. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And we did try when we were creating these kits. Um, so there's an overall discussion guide in each of the kits that we've created that assists the parent. And here's what your child might be feeling right now. Mm-hmm. Here's what's typically going through a child's head at this stage in, in the grief game. Um, but you as an adult, um, there may be times, for example, when you're reading a picture book to your child. And so we always recommend, it's written in the kits, that you review the books and review the discussion guides before you bring it up with your child in case anything is triggering for you. Mm-hmm. So once you've read that guide, you can then be prepared. When you turn to that page where the dog you know, does finally pass away or they adopt a new dog, things you, you wouldn't necessarily think would trigger you, you're prepared. And if, and so we write in, in a lot of the language, you know, it's healthy for a child to see an adult cry, but if you're going to cry uncontrollably, that can actually be scary for a kid. So right. save, you know, save those moments of grief for your private time, but don't be afraid to shed a tear or two. Mm-hmm. It, it's, it's interesting. It's coincidental that you, that you mentioned that I wrote a book a, a few years back called Real Magic, which is, it tells a real story. And um, someone who reviews books uh, online asked if, if he could review the book and read the book uh, for his YouTube channel. And I said, yeah, sure. Go right ahead. Thanks very much. And he read it, but he, he read it cold. He just stepped in front of the camera, oh, pushed yeah. record and started to read it. And it, I was really touched by the fact that it, it, he hit one of the pages and he's like visibly, he audibly went, 
uh, oh, and yeah. started to cry. And, and it was, it's a beautiful story. So it's, you know, that it's a, a touching that the tears come from, oh, this is so wonderful. It wasn't because yeah. of a loss, but yeah, I mean, it just, yeah, that's, it, that is really important. <laughs> you know, just, you don't want to lose it and completely lose it in front of your kids. Yeah, the opportunity to be prepared. And, and I mean, any, any, I'm sure a lot of your listeners <laughs> would recognize that there's a book for everything. Mm -hmm. There's a book for everyone. Mm -hmm. And as librarians, which is what my calling and trade has become, we really believe that you can find the right book for the right person, but allowing them the understanding of how to read that book can be much trickier. And especially again, when you're experiencing your own grief and trauma. And so that's why we wrote a discussion guide for every one of the books so that there are discussed, here's what's happening in the story and things, you know, Un, you know, normal, normal non-librarian parents may not realize that the end papers may tie into the skirt that the mother's wearing. And here's what that symbolizes or what that means. And it's coming up on another page. So be ready to talk about that again. Um, but beyond that, there are discussion prompts for how to utilize that book and the subjects in it to tackle this tricky subject that you're dealing with. And there are also observation guides. So maybe your child doesn't feel like talking. But if they look sad during this part, perhaps go back to the overall discussion guide about the trauma that you've experienced and revisit this section. And I and I'm, I'm oh, and also some, there are prompts for the the actual activities. So in this book, you'll see that they do a memorial service for their pet. Don't forget that's included in your kit. Um, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, I was going to say I, I really like the fact that this has been curated by librarians um, because I think that's important. And there are books on every subject we're closing in on 700 episodes of the reading with your kids podcast <laughs> and we've talked about yeah. we've talked about just about everything and um uh, you know um some books are better than others and you know and if you're yeah. if you if you're turning to a book for bibliotherapy as one of our guests uh, referred to it um you want to make sure mm -hmm. that you're picking up the best book for that for that uh f for that loss yeah, and when we were creating the kit, so the team the team initially consisted of myself and another librarian from um, the Lewiston Public Library in Lewiston, Maine, David Moorhead, um, Kirsten Cappy, who is the brilliant mind behind Curious City, which if, if your readers aren't familiar, it's a fabulous resource, and she focuses heavily on creating experiences to go along with picture books, which is what, you know, sh um, what we tried to do here, and then Bonnie's is a licensed clinical social worker based also out of Maine. And so we really felt like with all of the picture book knowledge we had and the ethical responsibility that um, tying Bonnie to the project to ensure that what, we're, what we were creating was responsible, was healthy, was constructive. Um, I cannot tell you. I personally reviewed probably I, – I would – easily guess about 150 books per kit mm -hmm. to determine the, the top books that we could choose. And it didn't have to be just content as well. You know, when we were reviewing these, the, the experiences and the audiences for these books are so diverse. I'm sure you're familiar with the We Need Diverse Books movement. Sure. Um, so we wanted to also apply that lens to what we were creating. So trying to find um, racial diversity or um, – uh, religious diversity, uh, how do, how do we include all of these things into the kids? And so if there, you know, it's easy to say there's a book for everything. And usually we feel that way. We can certainly find a book for a situation. Mm -hmm. We, I don't think we're technically there yet, right? Like we've got a lot more books to write to, to ensure that everybody can feel reflected in a story. Mm -hmm. However, if we couldn't find the appropriate story for that, we did try to write in opportunities in, under the community helper section. So who my family can turn to if um, we turn this kit back into the library or if we've utilized all the bits and pieces from it, now we're ready for the next thing. So really trying to provide that starting point, but then allowing families to look outward in their own communities and, and realize what is probably waiting for them. One of the things that really caught my eye and I loved it, but I have to, I have to, I have to ask you for it because I'm, I'm sure that some people might might wonder why do you include an, an, an acts of kindness guide oh, mm -hmm. if it's for people who are healing? So why is it important for people who mm -hmm. are hurt and healing to commit acts of kindness for others? 
No problem. That's such a good question. And to be honest, when we were doing it, we didn't, we knew that there was something missing, right? Like we had these fabulous art and play-based therapy activities that families could participate in together, or you could set your child up to experience solo if that was the experience that they needed. But I wanted to take it further. And we started the community helper's guide. And that was a good next bridge, what I had just discussed, like Mm -hmm. where to turn once you're done with this. But there's there's a piece, right? There's something in between those two steps. And so the acts of kindness guide is almost like when you're doing the activities and you're participating in a solo or a family art therapy or play-based therapy experience, that's about, I am in my grief. I have experienced this trauma. I need to process that. And these activities will allow me to do that. Once you're starting to get a handle on that, we really felt that we should have something to empower people. And the Acts of Kindness Guide provides suggestions for opportunities for your family to reach outward. So let's, just as an example, um, let's say that um, you had a loved one in your family who passed away because of cancer. Here are some national resources where folks can put together a, a walk or mm-hmm. they can, you know, man a phone booth or they can make a difference and sort of fight back against what took your loved one from you. Mm-hmm. But if this is a death of a pet sort of situation, how do you do that? There, you know, so we have humane societies and we have opportunities for you. If you're in a small community, like I, I once was when I lived in Vermont and everybody has the same vet chances are your vet also loved your animal to some extent. And mm-hmm. so you could do something kind for those people. And so you sort of take this trauma and you flip it on its head and you find a way to give back. And part of um, what we recognized after when we, we had created all this content, we really saw that what we were doing was providing opportunities for families to um, create their own versions of social emotional learning opportunities. And mm. if your readers aren't familiar or your listeners rather um casel c-a-s-e-l has a fabulous explanation online if you go to casel.org um you'll see a little tab that says what is social emotional learning s-e-l and what it comes down to is what they call social awareness which is the ability to take perspective of your surroundings and empathize with others from diverse backgrounds diverse cultures and understand how to engage with those people and how to Um, support those people. And so really it's an opportunity for our kids and even our grownups to participate in a little bit of social awareness, social emotional learning. Yeah. I, I, I love that. And, and I think it really is empowering um, for, for our kids to go out and realize that they have the power to change somebody else's life and, and, and to help others. Um, one of the things that I do in my educational magic shows, I've mentioned it on the show many times, is I go out and I ask kids what they're thankful for. And very, very often times kids will say, I am thankful that I can help so and so. I am very thankful that I can help other people. And, and you can see it in their eyes and it really is something that it makes a difference. It's, you know, we always talk about, you know, you, do something nice for somebody else. That's a really nice thing you're doing for that person. Well, it's a nice thing you're doing for yourself as well. Yeah. 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 Love how, that. How did the healing library, what, what inspired, what was the seed that started the healing oh. library to grow? <laughs> yeah. It's funny. You were talking about your book, which is a true story. Our mm-hmm. project was inspired by a true story. Also, um, I, maybe your listeners know Arthur Levine, who is, the man who the United States has to thank for Harry Potter coming to our country. But he actually created a picture book called What a Beautiful Morning. And it's it's about his family's own experience with Alzheimer's entering their mm. family. And Kirsten Cappy from Curious City had put together um, an experience for the book. And I was so inspired. I had, I had um, been talking to... My colleges, my, not Syracuse, but my, where I got my, um, bachelor's degree in adventure recreation, um, Green Mountain College. I had been talking to their library about putting together a student wellness kit for, like, to, to prevent burnout during, you know, test taking seasons. Mm -hmm. And we just, we weren't landing on the project quite, you know, neither of us could really find where it fit. We all liked the idea, but it just wasn't going to work out. And as soon as I saw what Kirsten had said about what a beautiful morning, I thought, that's it. This, this is about children. This is about families. And when we were in the process of creating the three initial kits, we did, um, the death of a loved one. 
the death of a pet and Alzheimer's in your family. And while we were actually um, creating the kits, my my oldest childhood friend passed away. And to be mired in this writing already, but then to have to sort of, you know, walk the walk as well as talk the talk, Mm -hmm. it really was an eye-opening experience, I think, for all of the team that this works, you know, this is working for us right now. Mm -hmm. And I think it lent some extra tenderness to what we were creating. And that's part of how the um, acts of kindness bit came about as well. You know, we knew there's, there's something else there. There are all these little pieces that when you look at this project in a design thinking sort of way, Mm -hmm. you recognize what the user needs and how to really approach it in a way that is careful and um, responsible. Well, I wish that Alzheimer's and your family kit was available when uh, a few years back. My, we didn't deal with Alzheimer's. We dealt with Parkinson's. My mom um, uh, passed away from that, and it was a very, very difficult five years for me and my kids, who at that time were in in middle school and entering high school, and and we dealt with it okay. And we, you know, we came together as a family. And, and we, as I look back, we kind of knew kind of instinctually to, you know, to spend more time together and to do acts of yeah. kindness and, and things like that. But it would have made it easier to have, you know, a resource to, to kind of look at and to be able to guide you through and also to have a resource that was created by folks uh, that you could trust. There were a lot of times I was doing stuff thinking, I don't know what I'm doing. I can't do this myself. <laughs> I know it's so true, and I my um my son was born just a year ago. He just turned one, and um as a new mother and a first time mother, you know I've been working with kids for twenty six. Oh my god, twenty six years. Mm-hmm. But but to to be in that moment, I was talking with a friend today about you know we've all got mommy guilt or daddy guilt, and you think you're doing the right thing, but it is such a reassurance to know like ah okay. A professional has looked at this. This is the best book I could be reading for my child. You know, this like local social worker is weighed in. I can see this thing and know that I'm saying the right thing. I can know that I'm approaching this topic in the best possible way we know how to approach it currently. And actually, um, my I, I wrote to Kirsten today to ask for our most recent download numbers. And we've had a huge spike recently. We we just hit 10,525 wow. downloads. Wow. Which is nuts. I know. We're, and I, I just, I'm like, I've got to send everybody flowers, you know? <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's such a reason to celebrate. And um, I have my a friend of mine, a librarian friend of mine, Jackie, is here um, babysitting in case Felix wakes up right now. <laughs> and I was telling her, and she was like, no, no, the thing about that number is, the ripple effect mm-hmm. like that's just the downloads but mm-hmm. people who are actually lending that out or telling someone else or reading with their children now like that's that's a, the root number mm-hmm. and for us when we created this project you know we we knew that we wanted it to be free we knew that the work that we were doing had to be available to everybody because diversity isn't just you know racial or religious it's socioeconomic yeah and so we've also worked really hard to listen to our libraries and nonprofits and schools that have wanted to work with us and to offer everything as a bit, uh, available as a free PDF download. Um, you just click and download and you have it. You know, we aren't going to track you or anything. <laughs> um, but then the flip side of that was we heard from some folks, this is wonderful, but my family or my library doesn't have the power or the manpower or the energy right now to create this, where are they available for sale? So we've actually um, responded to that request and we've started selling some of the kits online in in a variety of sizes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, well, that was one of the things I was going to ask you is, you know, this is a a tremendous amount of, of, of information, some great resources. And, you know, my first thought is this must be incredibly expensive, but you folks are offering it to for free. What a what a beautiful gift to the world. <laughs> Thank you. Or, you know how how else are, how else are you can help, you know? Yeah. If we're gonna do something for the good of people, we have to let people have it. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, I agree. And I, so actually and the, do you think oh I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. I was just saying, I you know, I agree. I think it's 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 a beautiful thing that you're doing that you are doing, and 
You know, one of the other things that I'm I'm so happy that that you're on the show tonight. Not only because we're we're celebrating Healing Library and letting folks know, we're going to let them know where exactly they can find it in a minute. But I'm also really excited because we're having a chance to see what a wonderful resource our librarians are. They're, you know, I think that librarians (laughs) are unsung heroes in our communities. You know, know, my image of the librarian when I was growing up was the lady who shushed you when you made any kind of noises in the library. That's how old I am. And, and, you know, made you pay that fine when your book was a half an hour late and you had to come up with a nickel and that was all you had for spending money for the week. But yeah. librarians are, uh, they're like, they're like human Google machines. Yeah, better than Google because we won't give you what you ask for. We'll give you what you need. Oh. You know, we'll ask those finding questions to ensure that you're taken care of. And, you know, and, and, and Megan is certainly exceptional. And, and I've just, I'm just loving our conversation here. But, you know, I've traveled around and I've, I've visited and performed at thousands of libraries across the country. And this is, you know, the, the folks that are meeting, the librarians are amazing. And they all, they, that's, the, you know, what, what you just said is so, so important. It's like, Hey, I need a book about, and they, it's not just, okay, and um, I'm going to take that keyword and, and pick out the first thing. They dig deeper. Well, what do you need yeah. that book for? What are you looking for? What are you looking to do with that? And the, these recommendations, and sometimes they'll say, well, you know, I, I remember looking for a book for my, my kids when they were in second grade and something came up in a conversation and the librarian said, well, why don't you... Why don't you see if your kids are really interested in digging deeper into that topic before you bring it up on your own? <laughs> and she was right. They weren't ready for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you saw that. The I think it was The Hill that had that article, More Americans Visited Libraries Than Movie Theaters in 2019. I did, uh, I did just see that. That is wonderful, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it's. I mean, it's great news. Now we just need to be, you know, properly funded. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Vote for, you know... It, if there's one thing people can take from this and they love their libraries, make a stink about it locally, you know, make sure that they're getting the funding they need because they're magicians, what they can do and um, the value that your tax dollars get from investing in libraries, I think is just outstanding. Yeah. And in some communities, and this is, and I I really, you know, I, excuse me, I'm going to climb up on a soapbox for a minute. Um, Do it. Yes. (laughs) We need to do this for our own communities, but we also need to stand up for libraries all over the place um, because yes. there are some communities, and I'll share this with you, Megan. There was one branch of the Boston Public Library that existed in, in, in an apartment in a housing projects in Boston. And mm-hmm. it was a really tough housing project. It was a really dangerous housing project. And I used to go and perform there. And I would look forward to it every year. And the librarian was always mystified why I would ever come back. Because, like I said, there's a whole library is in a one-bedroom apartment in a projects. And it was packed with books and packed with kids. And then I'm supposed to go in there with my son and my illusions and do a show. <laughs> but I loved it because this place was an oasis. This was the one place in this housing project where kids could go and feel safe. And they did feel safe. And everybody respected that. that, It was a sacred spot. And I know that that's not the only library like that out there. There are millions of our kids that rely on the libraries to have a place where they feel safe, to have a place where they have a chance to really kind of take their the, the love of learning that we hope that they're getting in school and, and take it deeper and really make a difference in their lives. Yeah, safe places to explore are very rare. Yeah. And libraries are one of the only places where exploration is literacy, right? You yeah. know, the opportunity to explore books, of course, but the programming that we're creating, if you look into even flashy things like maker spaces, mm-hmm. um, 
or language labs or memory labs or fixing labs, like all of these things, all of these creations that librarians are putting forth and really working hard with our community members to ensure that they're reflective. Mm-hmm. I just, I'm, I'm so, I will always be in love with libraries. Actually, I have a library tattoo. Like I, I <laughs> love libraries. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you, you know, uh, it, uh, amen. We, I just w- went on a field trip with my wife. Uh, she's a teacher in Boston. She's been teaching for 33 years. And, um, every year she takes her kids into the main branch of the Boston Public Library, which is an absolutely magnificent place, you know. Yeah, this is so cool. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, in the, the Boston, the, the, the children's section of the Boston Public Library, that main branch, it is so wild. They have, they have like tunnels that go through the bookcases and, <laughs> yeah. and the kids are wanting me to follow them. I'm like going, I'm almost a hundred. I can't get down through there, but they insisted and I got through the tunnels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have, I have some, um, brilliant friends who work at the Boston Public Library and in the kids department. And I can say you guys are so lucky. You have an, a, just an utterly brilliant team of human beings that really, really care down to their, you know, <laughs> mm-hmm. their their skeletons yep. about what they're creating. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're also really lucky because no matter where folks are listening to us from tonight, and we are we have been heard on every single continent in the world, including Antarctica. The show has been ah. downloaded to Antarctica. <laughs> so you you are in luck. You don't have to go to Boston um, or anywhere <laughs> else. You don't have to go to Tennessee, although it, it's great to go to Tennessee. Um, let everybody know where they can go to get these wonderful resources at the Healing Library. Awesome. Yeah, and we, we've had a bit of a global following, too. Excellent. So if you've already checked in, thank you. If you're new, uh, us being in the United States, our website is thehealinglibraryus.com. And if you, instead of, you know, if you go to the website and you want to look around and you have questions, you can reach out to me as well at thehealinglibraryus at gmail.com. We're trying to keep it simple. That's excellent. And just because our audio has been going in and out a little bit, I'm just going to repeat. The address is thehealinglibraryus.com. And your email address is thehealinglibraryus at gmail? Yeah, at gmail. Absolutely. This is wonderful. I've had a wonderful, wonderful time talking to you. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping that you're going to add a new kit to the library, which will give you an excuse to come back on the show in the near future. Oh, well, actually, we have a grant out, so keep your fingers crossed. We'll go by March. <laughs> That's great. Well, we're looking forward to it. You heard it, heard it here folks. first, folks. Megan's going to come back to the show. <laughs> We've had a great time speaking to the driving force behind the Healing Library, and you can find it at thehealinglibraryus.com. Megan Shadlick. Megan, thank you so, so very much for being on the show. Thank you to you for doing what you do. And thank you to everybody who's listening for investing in your kids with books. We love you. Please be sure to join us for the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. We will be celebrating Kids Expo Chicago, bringing you some amazing content that we recorded at this wonderful event. Interviews with kids, with parents, with authors, with educators. It is a whole lot of fun. You do not want to miss it. That's the next very special episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. We want to thank the folks who made today's show so very wonderful. Of course, I want to thank my my guest, Megan Shadlick. What an amazing thing she has created in the Healing Library. Please be sure to check it out and support it. also want to thank our sponsors. We want to thank our sponsor, Books. Dot com, V-O-O-K-S dot com. Remember that they are offering a free one-year subscription to their service to all teachers and homeschooling parents that are listening. You do want that that is an amazing, amazing offer. We also want to thank Arlene Heo, the author of Bruce Wayne is Insane Meaning Ninja Kitty. Check that out. It's available on Amazon. I want to thank my amazing producer, Fatima Khan, for all that she does for me. I want to thank my beautiful wife for all the support that she gives me. I want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. And as always, thank you so much. 
for taking the time to make the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast.